Good morning, all. Welcome to our MGH Neurology Grand Rounds. Thank you, everyone, for coming. For coming. It is my honor to introduce Dr. Shijin Chen. Dr. Chen received her medical and PhD degrees in residency training from Shanghai Medical College, Zhang University. She then completed her postdoctoral fellowship at Columbia University. Dr. Chen joined Massachusetts General Hospital in 2009 and later established a research program focusing on Parkinson's cancer associations as a basis for better understanding Parkinson's disease through multiple disciplinary collaborations. Her lab investigates common genetic and environmental factors connecting Parkinson's disease and cancer, as well as related fundamental cellular processes that lead to generation in neurons and overgrowth in dividing cells. Her group identified a critical role of the melanoma-related red hair gene in models of Parkinson's disease. With her team, Dr. Chen is seeking to translate her research findings to clinical therapies, reflecting her continued commitment to improving care for patients with Parkinson's and related diseases. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Chen. Thank you, Sandra, for the introduction. And good morning. It's a great honor to be here today to talk about our work at the interface between Parkinson's disease and cancer, uh, particularly melanoma. Uh, before I uh, before I start the topic, for those of you who have not met our team, uh, we are the Molecular Neurobiology Lab located in um, the Navy Yard campus, building 140, uh, third floor, uh, together with, a, uh, with a Dr. Michael Schwarzschild, uh, my mentor, and uh, Dr. Ratchet Bakshi, we um, study the molecular mechanisms of uh, neurodegeneration in Parkinson's disease. Uh, with our collaborators, we pursue major uh, epidemiological and uh, clinical clues to Parkinson's and uh, uh, related uh, diseases. Uh, with this audience, so I will be brief with my introduction to Parkinson's disease. Uh, it is a chronic, progressive, um, uh, a neurodegenerative disease that is uh, uh, affecting approximately a million Americans and uh, 10 million individuals worldwide. And uh, Parkinson's is a movement disorder. Um, it's uh, uh, many associated uh, with, uh, with uh, motor deficits, uh, including trauma, rigidity, uh, breath dyskinesia, and uh, uh, posture instability. Uh, dopamine replacement uh, by levodopa and other symptomatic treatments are available and uh, effective, uh, at least initially, but uh, there's currently no cure for the disease. Um, pathologically, Parkinson's is uh, characterized by the loss of uh, dopaminergic pigment, dopaminergic neurons in a substantial Niagara, and that causes uh, dopamine uh, deficiency in the striatum. Another pathological uh, hallmark of Parkinson's is uh, uh, Lewy bodies, which are intracellular protein uh, inclusions containing aggregates of uh, alpha -salucle. Uh, it is quite clear now that uh, uh, apasalucleum pathology in Parkinson's uh, disease goes beyond the uh, Niagara striatal dopamine system. Uh, multiple cell types uh, throughout uh, the central and um, uh, peripheral nervous systems can be involved. Uh, um, uh, probably from uh, early disease onwards. Uh, accordingly, there is non, uh, non prodromal stage um, uh, with uh, non motor symptoms. Uh, most Parkinson's cases are considered uh, uh, idiopathic, and uh, the um, uh, recent advances have. Uh, uh, have further defined uh, 
um, genetic architect and landscape of uh, uh, Parkinson's risk. Um, more than 20 genes uh, have been identified since the first, uh, first PD-related genes. Uh, SNCA includes uh, uh, encoding uh, alpha silicon was discovered in 1997. And these genetic factors, uh, together with uh, uh, environmental risk uh, and the inverse risk factors, uh, uh, such as smoking and uh, caffeine, um, uh, physical activity that um, Michael uh, Steve Steve Gumpet uh, working on, uh, and uh, perhaps more importantly, the interactions between uh, gen uh, genes and environmental factors uh, uh, contributed to uh, development and progression of Parkinson's disease. Uh, it's hard to imagine two diseases that are more different than Parkinson's disease and uh, cancer. Uh, the two conditions um, seemingly result from uh, two very different or even opposite uh, uh, signaling forces. One to uh, tell cells to overgrow, the other drives cells to die premature. Uh, consistent enough, uh, epidemiological studies uh, have demonstrated a lower uh, cancer risk in, in uh, subjects with a Parkinson's disease. Uh, as uh, shown in this um, um, meta-analysis 13 years ago, and uh, a more recent uh, meta-analysis that we did with uh, uh, Xiang Gao when, when he was uh, at uh, uh, Penn State University. Uh, cancer incidence in, in Parkinson's so, um, is, uh, was 15% uh, lower. And um, uh, uh, more interestingly, the inverse association uh, is bi-directional. Uh, PD incidence in cancer patients uh, is 26% lower. Uh, because smoking uh, is uh, strongly associated with uh, Parkinson's disease and many uh, uh, site specific cancers, we strat uh, stratified uh, smoking related cancers, which uh, uh, include cancers of lung, uh, throat, um, and mouth, and uh, other sites. Um, smoking, uh, the uh, smoking related uh, cancer risk was 27% uh, uh, lower in, in subjects with a Parkinson's disease and uh, vice versa. Um, Parkinson's risk uh, is 22% lower in patients with a cancer. As for non-smoking related cancer, and the uh, inverse association is um, uh, a little weaker, but uh, uh, still uh, statistically significant. And uh, uh, it similarly goes um, uh, both ways. We further showed that uh, showed lower uh, risk for uh, site-specific cancers, including uh, lung cancer, uh, colorectal cancer and uh, breast cancer and lung melanoma skin cancer risks uh, were not changed. And these results um, uh, uh, overall are consistent uh, with the, the 2010 meta-analysis and uh, uh, other, other meta-analysis um, uh, that I uh, wouldn't have time to get to uh, today. Uh, a big contrast is um, um, melanoma risk uh, increases uh, uh, in patients with a Parkinson's disease by 41% uh, or 56%, depending uh, on um, uh, the uh, analytical models. And uh, when, when and then cancer risk uh, um, so further decreased when melanoma was excluded. Uh, and uh, similar to total cancer, uh, the association, be the positive association between Parkinson's disease and the melanoma are bi-directional. As, uh, um, 
uh, uh, as uh, shown by this um, uh, meta analysis, 2015 meta analysis, and uh, our um, recent meta analysis of uh, 33. Uh, studies uh, indicating um, more than two-fold increased uh, uh, melanoma risk in, in subjects with uh, Parkinson's disease and uh, um, uh, vice versa, um, uh, about 40% increased uh, um, Parkinson's risk uh, in patients with uh, melanoma. So uh, what, what is melanoma? Uh, melanoma is a type of skin cancer that is uh, uh, originate, uh, originated from uh, melanocytes. Uh, it is so uh, one of the most aggressive and treatment resistant human cancers and account for um, about 75% of all skin cancer deaths. Among risk factors are family history and uh, uh, red hair and fair skin. And there's a clinical evidence supporting the connection between Parkinson's disease and the melanoma um, as well. Uh, this study 10 years ago um, uh, reported uh, uh, extended sonographic uh, um, substantial nigra area. Uh, in melanoma patients. And alpha silicon is expressed uh, in human melanoma tissues. And, and the uh, expression levels is, uh, um, appear to correlate with the melanoma stages. The higher and the more advanced stage, the higher, higher expression levels. Uh, so wh why are uh, um, uh, melanoma and uh, Parkinson's disease uh, uh, associated? So as, as different and, and uh, um, uh, distinct as they, they seem, um, melanocytes and uh, dopaminergic neurons actually share the same features. Uh, they both uh, have uh, um, the same embryonic orange uh, from um, the neural crest, and they both share common mechanisms regulating cell survival and death, uh, such as those uh, uh, that are responsible for cell death for uh, regulation, DNA repair, and uh, uh, oxidative stress, and others. And both use the tyrosine as a uh, for for end end uh, uh, product, and uh, uh, levodopa uh, synthetic pathway is crucial to both dopamine and uh, melanin. Uh, this in in melanocytes, uh, tyrosine is the uh, oxidized tyrosine to uh, uh, bear levodopa to dopaquinol, and then melanin. In dopamine retinols, and hydroxylase, TH, converts the tyrosine of the levodopa to dopamine. Um, and the dopamine autooxidation is uh, considered to uh, 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 considered to form uh, norm. Um, but uh, there's all some controversy even there we uh, will mention later. And, and why uh, um, melanoma and the Parkinson's link? Um, because levodopa being a uh, common precursor uh, to both dopamine and the melanin. Uh, initially, levodopa, and uh, levodopa, as we all know, levodopa is, is a common, common anti Parkinsonian treatment. So initially, it was proposed that uh, uh, levodopa may have a role uh, in, in the Parkinson's and the melanoma link. Uh, in fact, the um, uh, very first reported uh, melanoma cases in Parkinson's disease uh, were from patients taking levodopa. Uh, however, the subsequent um, findings that uh, uh, um, rate of uh, rate of uh, melanoma uh, increases in patient uh, in early Parkinson's patients, not yet 
um, taking levodopa, uh, argue against the uh, um, uh, involvement of levodopa. Uh, uh, however, I think uh, more well-designed clinical studies are uh, still needed to uh, fully settle uh, this issue, especially in at-risk populations. Uh, in in uh, we we performed a meta analysis of uh, the four uh, the four existing uh, studies about uh, levodopa and uh, uh, Parkinson's risk, and we we did not uh, find any uh, uh, levodopa effect uh, in um, uh, melanoma uh, risk in Parkinson's. Uh, but again, um, uh, uh, more. Uh, well-designed studies are still needed. And then, um, uh, back to the first one, why are Parkinson's disease and melanoma linked? Um, are there common genetic uh, predispositions? Uh, in this study, uh, Xiang Gao and uh, Alberto uh, Achirio, for the first time, linked the family history of uh, melanoma to Parkinson's disease risk. In, a, uh, in two large um, perspective of um, healthy populations, um, uh, Parkinson's risk increased uh, in individuals with a, with a family history of a melanoma in, in their first, de first degree relatives. Uh, and uh, in a in a population based uh, uh, based study, uh, melanoma risk uh, increases in individuals with a uh, Parkinson's disease and uh, and uh, they are and uh, they are first degree relatives, second degree uh, relatives, even third even third degree relatives, and and also higher um, Parkinson's disease death. Uh, among um, individuals with a melanoma and their relatives. Uh, these results suggest um, uh, uh, there might be some genetic connection between Parkinson's disease and the melanoma. So you now what genes might be um, uh, involved? Uh, in, in the same two uh, perspective cohorts, Xiang and Abato uh, reported um, um, a higher higher PD risk uh, with a, a with a decrease in darkness of uh, hair color. Individuals with a uh, uh, red hair had uh, uh, almost twofold higher uh, risk of Parkinson's uh, relative to black individuals with a uh, black hair. And the people with the red hair and the fair skin uh, are significantly more likely to develop a, a melanoma. And combined the results from two existing studies so far um, uh, indicate the uh, statistically significant association between uh, red hair color and uh, increased Parkinson's disease risk. Uh, so what determines our uh, hair color? Two forms of uh, melanin, um, uh, brown, black, euromelanin, and red, yellow, few melanin, um, determine our skin and uh, hair color. The re relative amount of uh, few melanin and uh, euromelanin is uh, determined by uh, MC1R. Uh, melanin coating res uh, one receptor uh, binding to uh, its ligand alpha MSH, MC1R activates um, tyrosinase and uh, facilitates uh, the dark U melanin synthesis of a uh, of U uh, melanin pigment. And common po polymorphism of uh, the MC1R gene. Um, are associated with a normal difference in, in hair and skin color. Uh, and the loss of uh, function of MC1R variants are associated with, uh, associated with the red hair and uh, fair skin. 
uh, in the 2009 study, uh, Xiang and uh, Abato um, reported uh, uh, increased uh, P higher PD risk uh, in individuals um, uh, with uh, MC1R51 um, uh, R cis, cis general type. Um, and this uh, uh, MC1 variant is uh, uh, associated, strongly associated uh, with the uh, red hair. Uh, there had been several other studies uh, about uh, uh, MC1R51C uh, variant. Um, and we performed a meta analysis and found uh, a significant, a significant association between uh, the red head MC1 variant and um, uh, Parkinson's risk. Uh, in the lab, Wai Zhao. Uh, a very talented uh, uh, fellow uh, addressed uh, some of the important questions uh, regarding um, MC1 bi biology in dopaminergic neurons. First, uh, is MC1 expressed in dopaminergic neurons? Uh, if yes, uh, is MC1 altered in Parkinson's um, patients? Uh, by using Western blotting, uh, immunohistochemistry and uh, micro, uh, uh, micro dissection of uh, um, dopaminergic neurons followed by uh, qPCR. Uh, we detect the MC1R at uh, protein and MRR, mRNA levels um, in, uh, the, uh, in the mouse uh, substantial nigra, and the uh, MC1R uh, co localizes with the uh, tyrosine hydroxylase, which is a marker for dopaminergic neurons. Uh, similarly, in the human substantial nigra, uh, MC1 is expressed and uh, it co localizes with the uh, with, uh, um, uh, dopaminergic neuron marker, tyrosine hydroxylase. Uh, using postmodern tissues from uh, uh, patients with a Parkinson's disease, uh, we found a reduced MC1R expression uh, and a reduced the number of uh, MC1R positive cells, uh, and reduced the number of uh, MC1R expression uh, dopamine neurons. Uh, we next asked uh, uh, what function or role uh, MC1R may play uh, in dopaminergic neurons. Uh, we used uh, redhead mice carrying an uh, inactivating MC1R mutation. Uh, these mice uh, on, on black C57 background uh, are uh, have have a phenotype analogous to red hair humans, and Dr. David Fisher, uh, the chief of the dermatology department here at Mass General, reported a weaker turning response and uh, a lower threshold of melanoma induction uh, in these mice. Uh, in collaboration with uh, Dr. Fisher. Uh, we found that um, uh, local motor, uh, acti local motor uh, activity declined uh, when, when the redhead mice, uh, when they age, and there was uh, um, a reduction in uh, striatal dopamine and uh, reduced the number of uh, dopaminergic neurons uh, in uh, the redhead mice. Uh, Dr. Fisher's group uh, reported um, uh, in, uh, increased uh, oxidative DNA uh, and a lipid lipid damage uh, DNA and lipid damage in redhead mice in the skin, uh, and uh, we found uh, greater uh, protein oxidative damage and uh, DNA uh, oxidative uh, uh, marker in in their membrane. Uh, we then asked uh, whether uh, redhead um, 
uh, the MCYE might be uh, more susceptible, uh, susceptible to dopaminergic toxins. Uh, we first test uh, two uh, classic dopaminergic toxins, uh, six hydroxy dopamine, uh, which uh, selectively destroys uh, the nigrostriatal dopamine system, uh, the dopamine system in, uh, induced a more severe uh, lesion in red head mice. Uh, they displayed more dramatic behav behavioral changes uh, and a further, a further reduction in dopamine, uh, in striatal um, uh, dopamine, and uh, further loss of uh, dopaminergic neurons uh, in a substantial nigra. And uh, we observed uh, uh, exacerbated uh, uh, MPTP neurotoxicity uh, in redhead mice uh, as compared uh, uh, with the, their wild type of litter mates uh, um, at uh, the levels of uh, neuropathology and uh, neurochemistry. Uh, we then used uh, a more relevant uh, uh, transgenic alpha-saleucalin model for Parkinson's disease uh, by injecting um, um, Alpha-saleucalin virus express virus expressing uh, human wild type uh, uh, alpha-saleucalin. As we mentioned earlier, alpha-saleucalin is essential to Parkinson's pathophysiology and the Parkinson's genetics. And uh, uh, alpha-saleucalin induces uh, mild to moderate loss of dopaminergic neurons. And a uh, redhead mice uh, displayed uh, more uh, epsilateral turns induced by alpha saleucanin and a more high higher molecular uh, alpha, -salu uh, alpha saleucanin. Um, a higher molecular alpha saleucanin species, again, uh, oligomers, uh, are considered the pathogenic, more toxic. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, uh, this, um, uh, further re reduction in in uh, uh, dopamine content in the striatum and uh, more substantial loss of uh, dopaminergic neurons in a substantial nigra in uh, wild in red head mice as compared to their uh, wild wild type uh, uh, mates. And the red yellow. Uh, phenotype uh, can be restored uh, in redhead mice by a human uh, MCY transgene to normal to their normal black uh, uh, coat color. Uh, we used uh, MCY transgenic mice to examine whether um, MCY the MCY transgene can uh, rescue dopamine deficits induced um, by MC1 loss of a function uh, absolutely. We first confirmed uh, MC1 expression uh, in dopamine uh, trans, trans, uh, transgenic expression in dopaminergic neurons. Uh, and indeed, uh, a human MC1 transgene um, was able to res restore um, striatal dopamine uh, levels and um, uh, dopaminergic, nigro dopaminergic neurons. Uh, then uh, lastly, we asked uh, uh, whether MC1 activation is uh, protective. Uh, we first tested the uh, uh, um, highly selective uh, potent uh, MC1 agonist BMS uh, 470539. Uh, uh, our PK study uh, indicate, uh, indicated uh, about 10% brain penetrance. And uh, uh, BMS uh, treated um, mice um, displayed uh, uh, increases in striatal dopamine and uh, yeah, the increased the number of um, uh, nigral dopaminergic neurons uh, and the uh, phosphorylated alpha-saleucanin aggregates, uh, which uh, 
crest bound uh, to neurodegeneration in, in Parkinson's disease uh, was reduced in uh, BMS compound treated uh, uh, mice. Uh, we then tested uh, another MC1 agonist uh, of a melanotide, uh, which is a, a synthetic uh, um, analog to alpha MSH and approved the drug for uh, certain skin conditions. And uh, uh, not surprisingly, um, with this molecular size, molecular weight, alpha melanotide does not cross a blood brain barrier. Uh, a striatal injection of uh, alpha melanotide uh, uh, protected uh, against uh, alpha silicone induced uh, striatal dopamine de uh, depletion and uh, loss of uh, dopamine magical neurons in a substantial, uh, substantial nigra. And similarly, uh, phosphorylated alpha silicon aggregates so were uh, reduced in uh, alpha um, melanotite treated animals. And uh, the protective effects of um, alpha melanotite diminished uh, in redhead mice. Uh, suggesting MC1R specificity of um, the uh, alpha melanotide neuroprotection. Uh, so we addressed some of these questions, and our findings uh, uh, suggest support uh, uh, a role of MC1R in in. Uh, in Parkinson's uh, pathophysiology, a protective uh, uh, role of uh, MC1R uh, in dopaminergic neurons that is uh, similar to um, that in, uh, in skin. Uh, these findings led to uh, more questions. So uh, we have been focusing on uh, uh, CNS and uh, have shown uh, the local CNS uh, um, MC1 mediated, mediated dopaminergic neuroprotection. Um, and however, uh, our findings do not uh, exclude uh, uh, possible, uh, uh, possible effect of uh, peripheral uh, MC1R. And, and uh, uh, indeed, in a in a model in a mouse model uh, MPTP model of uh, uh, Parkinson's with a uh, with a um, systemic inflammation induced by LTS, um, uh, alpha alpha melanotide uh, treatment uh, was uh, was able to uh, uh, attenuate uh, uh, dopamine. Uh, 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 like uh, dopaminergic neurodegeneration uh, at uh, the behavioral, uh, neuropathological, and uh, neuro neurochemical uh, uh, as assessed by by this um, indicated by uh, these assessments, uh, and uh, the the effect were, was um, uh, uh, MC1R depend, uh, dependent. Um, uh, we worked with uh, with uh, Abbott Hong and uh, uh, Grace Lacrotti uh, on a, on a uh, clinical trial uh, protocol. Uh, unfortunately, the trial was uh, delayed due to a funding issue. Uh, uh, however, and these results uh, are still significant because uh, and they will inform um, uh, future possible develop clinical development of uh, MC1 activation as uh, a therapeutic strategy for Parkinson's disease. Uh, we know MC1 is um, at the pigmentation gene and um, uh, MC1 in inactivation uh, mediated uh, melanoma genesis uh, uh, is uh, pigmentation dependent, um, uh, few melanin dependent to be to be specific, 
And then what about uh, uh, MC1R influence on dopaminergic neurons? Uh, is, is a pigmentation involved? Uh, as we mentioned earlier, uh, red, red hair individuals have a higher risk of developing Parkinson's disease. And uh, uh, my pathway analysis uh, uh, I don't, uh, from uh, using, uh, using DWAS uh, Parkinson's study databases um, identified the MC1 melanin genesis as um, uh, the top significant pathway uh, in, uh, in Parkinson's disease. And these studies support um, a, a role of uh, uh, peripheral or systemic um, pigmentation in, in Parkinson's disease. Now, what about normal? After all, Parkinson's disease is uh, characterized by a uh, loss of pigmented uh, dopaminergic neurons in a substantial nigra. Uh, we do not know uh, what uh, what role MC1R uh, plays, whether it has a role uh, in neuromelanin synthesis. Uh, what we do know is that um, neuromelanin uh, is also a mixture of uh, few melanin and uromelanin, with a with a few melanin in the core and uh, uromelanin on the surface. Uh, our most recent study jointly with uh, Dr. Ito, the author of uh, this PNS paper, um, report, we, we, in this study, we reported um, uh, increased field melanin markers in postmodern substantia, uh, substantial nigra uh, from Parkinson's patients uh, and uh, reduced, and, uh, reduced uh, your melanin. Um, um, as compared to uh, an, an affected um, uh, healthy control, substantial nigra, uh, and also uh, postmodern substantial nigra from uh, uh, patients with uh, Alzheimer's disease. Um, since uh, melanin is an antiox uh, antioxidant uh, and uh, your ma field melanin is um, is less stable uh, and can act as a pro accident. Uh, so uh, it, it is uh, uh, reasonable to hypothesize that uh, the thinning protective surface and uh, uh, exposing uh, toxic core, you, a few melanin core, um, may contribute to a, a progression of Parkinson's disease, if not uh, its uh, uh, initiation. Uh, we are now uh, in the lab, we are now uh, investigating, uh, investigating uh, how field melanin and the your melanin uh, may affect the uh, uh, dopaminant neurons uh, differently. Uh, and uh, uh, more interestingly, emerging evidence supporting uh, uh, involvement of, uh, of uh, uh, skin pigmentation, peripheral uh, pigmentation uh, in, in uh, the pathogenesis of uh, Parkinson's disease. Uh, this paper um, uh, reported uh, uh, tyrosinase, which is uh, responsible for uh, peripheral melanin, what we know, uh, uh, and um, uh, peripheral uh, tyro uh, melanin and uh, dopaminergic neural degeneration uh, in uh, a uh, uh, mouse model, the human humanized uh, pigmented uh, uh, mouse model of um, uh, Parkinson's disease. Uh, and uh, with the help from uh, from Dr. Mesu uh, Froch, uh, um, Brad Hyman, and uh, Derek Oakley, uh, we are uh, requesting uh, human tissues uh, to study uh, skin and the brain melanin um, pathway because uh, uh, small 
lab uh, animals do usually do not have uh, uh, normality. Uh, to summarize my talk, uh, Parkinson's disease may be inversely associated with a total cancer, but is positively associated with a melanoma. Uh, melanoma linked red hair and uh, MC1R, R151C may be associated with a Parkinson's disease risk. Uh, MC1 is expressed in dopaminergic neurons and it plays a role in uh, madness and defense of the nigrosoidal system. And uh, MC1 activation uh, is neuroprotective. Now, MC1 uh, pigmentation and uh, few melanin uh, pathway may represent a uh, 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 common mechanism for uh, neurodegeneration in Parkinson's disease and uh, tumor genesis in melanoma. Uh, and uh, lastly, uh, take home message for clinicians, uh, uh, most of you uh, are um, melanoma patients um, um, and Parkinson's patients should be monitored for uh, the other condition. Uh, before I wrap up, I'd like to introduce our ASAP team, uh, which is led by uh, Tim Chen um, at uh, Cleveland Clinic. Uh, Wei Yi Peng uh, at the University of Houston, and Hussein Tobi, Kenshin Yi uh, at um, uh, MD Anderson Cancer Center, and Michael Ratchet and myself. Uh, we were very lucky to uh, win this major award from um, uh, ASAP and Michael J. Fox Foundation to, uh, uh, to pursue immune role in cancer linked to Parkinson's um, uh, disease past physiology. Uh, and uh, with, uh, with the support from uh, uh, Jen and uh, Alan Backing Foundation, uh, our team organized uh, um, uh, neurodegenerative and cancer, uh, the second uh, neurodegenerative disease and cancer conference uh, earlier this year uh, in uh, Houston following the second second conference uh, uh, back a couple of years ago here in Boston. Um, we uh, brought uh, uh, the international expertise uh, to uh, exchange uh, insights uh, into the uh, epidemiology, genetics, and uh, biology uh, and nine the associations between uh, neurodegenerative disease and cancer. Uh, so uh, much more work um, uh, ongoing and uh, uh, planned in the future. Um, so uh, stay tuned. I have to do this. <laughs> I have to do the last slide, so very important. Uh, I, I would like to thank my collaborators, uh, Xiang Gao and uh, Alberto Achirio from the Harvard School of uh, Public Health, uh, Dr. David Fisher uh, uh, from uh, uh, MGH Dermatology, uh, Dr. Ian Jackson from uh, in the University of Edinburgh, and uh, Dr. Matthew Roach here at uh, MGH, and uh, Professors Kaz Wakamasu and Ito uh, from uh, Fujita Health University in Japan, uh, Louis, uh, Professor Luigi Zeka from National uh, Research Council of uh, Italy, and uh, Michael uh, Levy um, here at uh, MGH Neurology, who has, uh, has been helping us with, um, with uh, um, uh, MC1 related project and uh, uh, other uh, immune related projects. And of course, my mentor, uh, Michael uh, George Child, uh, and then Richard uh, Yuan Hang, uh, in, and Wai um, uh, Zhao Pranay, uh, and uh, everybody in, in, in the lab who contributed directly uh, or indirectly to our studies. And we are very grateful to uh, our funding agencies. Uh, and I'm extremely grateful um, to uh, uh, um, 
for to, uh, Department of Leadership, uh, Merit, uh, Rudy, um, uh, Brad, uh, whether it was uh, for ASAP uh, funding interview or tissue request, uh, those are always help uh, available and uh, everyone who uh, helped uh, creating such a supportive environment here at uh, Mass General Neurology. Uh, thank you, everybody. <laughs> Congratulations. First time, I'm going to be the And I the next one. I was talking your boss. How you might be um, some type of fluid or getting marker around these pathways to be able to tell patients who might be at high risk. That as well as the whether there's any relationship to the studies that have identified the color of surgery and when people see disorders, the is there any relationship to that the resident disorder and this pathway with different pathways? Uh, thank you, thank you, Merit. And that's a uh, that's a great uh, question for uh, 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 for those who are online. Uh, I'm uh, I'm told to repeat uh, the question. Uh, There's a question from Merit. Uh, it's about uh, uh, if there's uh, there's a bowel bowel marker, say skin bowel marker, uh, related to the malady pathway, uh, especially for early Parkinson's disease. Uh, yeah, it's a it's a fast evolving field. Uh, very interesting. Uh, a lot of uh, important development uh, regarding skin biomarkers for Parkinson's disease. Uh, most recent uh, paper, um, uh, uh, almost uh, a milestone paper, uh, recently in uh, 2003, uh, earlier, uh, and uh, in, in JAMA uh, neurology and reporting in PPFI uh, 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 cohort that uh, uh, skin alpha silicon, uh, uh, I'm sorry, uh, uh, alpha silicon seeding assay uh, used uh, um, uh, in this, this paper specifically about CSF uh, alpha silicon seeding assay. But uh, alpha silicon, skin alpha silicon uh, have been reported to be uh, to be very uh, selective and uh, highly selective and specific uh, to Parkinson's disease. And uh, there, are, there are some evidence supporting collection between melanin and uh, alpha silicon that uh, I didn't get to uh, the details today. Uh, and uh, the clinical trial we uh, uh, I was talking about was uh, uh, yeah uh, uh, um, a phase early earlier phase uh, uh, um, uh, a, uh, safety and uh, safety trial but uh, uh, we we were also planning for um, uh, uh, skin melanin and alpha silicone as a as a bio, as a curbile markers for Parkinson's disease. Uh, there's really um, uh, something exciting, uh, exciting there. So as a as what collection between um, melanin and uh, alpha silicone there. Uh, and uh, yeah, really great question. Do you have a message all the time? What's so good? Someone knows, you know, what's the increased use of the parts? What is the difference? What is the difference between the patient who can come up without parts or what's kind of the most protected that is not? I'm sorry, that might not be could you could you just uh, uh, repeat? Yeah, the question is uh, what's the increased risk that if someone has now today, what's their option? What's the increased risk of the Dalton Parkinson within a period of time? Um uh, yeah, uh, this is the uh, yeah, the uh, association between Parkinson's. I, I'm sorry, the question was uh, um uh, what's the odds ratio um of uh, melanoma risk in 
patients who have Parkinson's disease, right? What's the opposite? Is someone asked mental illness? Um, Are they in the increased risk of developing Parkinson's? Uh, it's uh, it's uh, uh, about risk of uh, of uh, Parkinson's in patients with a melanoma. Uh, yes, the the association is uh, goes both ways. Um, Parkinson's patients have a high risk of developing melanoma, and vice versa. Melanoma patients have a high risk of development. Um, of uh, uh, Parkinson's disease, uh, and uh, uh, this the the association is well documented. is uh, is uh, overall um, quite consistent and uh, robust. Uh, and uh, literature reported of uh, the the odds ratio from uh, uh, somewhere between two to four. Um, it's uh, it's quite robust. Uh, I would say around a twofold or that something. Is, is there a study uh, going into the mechanisms of the, the people that will end up not developing uh, if they start having alcohol, the ones that did not have problems? Is there a protective uh, um, of the genes or the mechanisms that protect them? Uh, yeah, that that is a great question. Uh, um, yes, to to think uh, uh, to approach this question from a different angle. Uh, those who do not develop a, a Parkinson's, there might be some protective mechanisms. And people, people, uh, individuals are very different. Uh, um, just like. Uh, uh, those you know, genetics uh, you have with those gene mutations doesn't mean you have uh, uh, you 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 will de de develop a uh, um, Parkinson's or, or a melanoma. And uh, same is the case. Uh, I would say uh, the uh, melanin pathway MCR may be just uh, one of the factors. So there may be other factors, uh, environmental or, or uh, genetic, and uh, that we we. Uh, do not yet understand, um, but uh, I, I am sure it's uh, all uh, in play. So, uh, MSA, sorry. Thank you so much for the interesting talk. Any other online maybe I'm sorry, you can just share your thoughts for me to come as a speaker today and see one of our audience to the patients. I think there's no one. Uh, yeah, I mean, Sandra's question just for this for online. Uh, it's about uh, um, a possible clinical future clinical trial, uh, whether we should start uh, um, in early Parkinson's or prodromal Parkinson's or normal populations. Um, it's, um, uh, I, I, uh, as we're showing Parkinson's, that's a prolonged prodromal stage. Uh, uh, for clinical uh, Parkinson's uh, clinical diagnosis, and uh, it's uh, that it's uh, increasingly uh, important, and uh, and uh, uh, the research field uh, is increasingly focusing on, on um, possible prevention uh, of Parkinson's disease. So uh, any clinical trial uh, with uh, disease modifier or pre I would think uh, uh, it's uh, it's better to 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 go early. Uh, uh, yeah, we we uh, with a with a uh, advanced uh, have better understanding of the uh, of the disease causes. Uh, I I think that also uh, often opportunities to to do early trial to prevent Parkinson's or. Uh, uh, start as early as possible. So, uh, an message is the audience by him for the next one. Is that for her? Uh, okay. MSA, MSA is the audience by him for the next one. So, we're interested in MSA in pediatrics because, you know, the program that I've basically given you 
And then the other one is, um, uh, um, instead of the, the hair color, uh, Fitzpatrick for a study also is partner because the Fitzpatrick is really more like a capacity attached on the skin uh, mm -hmm. in dermatology. And I don't know if that capacity of scanning versus the base by melting will have a difference in the color of the partner. The second question I'm going to know, you know, like, you Yeah, um, I'm on the yes. um, um, Dr. Is there data about the instance of PD in redheads with a previous history of um, of a melanoma? Um, I the literature I reviewed uh, about a Parkinson's instance in melanoma uh, uh, is um, not a specific. It's not a specifically um, from. Uh, uh, redhead Parkinson's disease, um, but uh, I, uh, well, uh, uh, Dr. Fisher, um, he probably know more about this. Uh, there are definitely um, uh, Parkinson's cases, the redhead uh, with both Parkinson's and uh, melanoma. And also, uh, I I have uh, some uh, patients contacting me uh, saying. Um, I have redhead, I have melanoma, and then uh, Parkinson's. So uh, definitely cases there, but uh, uh, we uh, I don't think uh, that uh, studies uh, there's any studies uh, in this specific uh, population. Uh, 
uh, about uh, Parkinson's and melanoma cases. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.